Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question is Frederick How do you feel when your team chooses a tool that you are not comfortable with? So let's get into it so when it comes to picking tools and libraries, whatever you may call it, it you may not know this unless you've worked in a team of some sort, but it's actually very common that you have some sort of democracy type of process around it. In front end, it's a little bit more ad hoc, but you will definitely have this discussion whether or not, you know, somebody's going to come in and they're going to say, hey, we should add this tool here, and then for some reason they're either just going to add it and I'll talk about who there are some people who can just add depending on your work culture of course but some people can simply add something into the process and hey everybody's okay with it and most of the time that person is going to be the person who is perceived to be the sort of individual that has the most amount of say in other words if you have a truly senior developer somewhere for whatever reason it's been he or she has been working there for a long time or it's the CTO or something pretty much anybody who is lower down or perceives themselves as being lower down the ladder or maybe they don't care is going to be okay with that. For me personally it kind of comes down to that well I don't really mind so much if somebody adds a library as long as I understand uh, that the library that they are adding has well, it basically needs to fulfill this one single requirement. That's all I ask. It's the only thing I've ever asked, ever. And you would be surprised at how shitty people are at considering this rule. <sighs> Alright, so we, my one secret, my one rule for adding a library. I don't care if you're back-end, front-end, operations, it doesn't matter. The investment that you are making, in other words, the problem that this library or tool is going to solve for you needs to overweigh or weigh up the cost of using it. So what did I say? The value of the tool needs to be in balance to the amount of investment that you are making. I'll give you an example. If you are adding a small little library to say your backend code, that for some, let's say that helps you with logs. A logging library is very, very similar. Sim it's, a, it's a simple thing. You pick a library that does some type of logging. Now, most of the time, I don't. I, I as an individual, I don't care for the most part what logging library you pick. The reason it's very simple because if for some reason this doesn't fulfill our requirements, it would be very easy for us to switch it out because we need some type of logging system and a logging library is usually in the... In, you have one or two files that instantiate the logger and then you have some configuration files somewhere outside of the project and then you have most of the time just a single line thing without the, throughout the code base that logs out something. It is very easy, it's very low risk for us to add something like that in. The cost benefit, like the cost value analysis is good, it's solid. If you do something like add, I don't know, let's say that you add a, well, there are so many, many, many libraries for the various things, but let's say that you add some type of functional programming immutability, something, something to your front end code and your motivation for doing this is basically just so that you can have some type of very subjective benefit. Well, then I will question you a little bit because I know for a fact that unless you have a very good reason to do this, what you're actually going to do is that you're going to add weight, uh, weight to the end bundle for the front end code, which means a poor user experience. So if the thing that you are adding in that is going into production code is really only going to give you some mental satisfaction without all that much practical value in terms of maintainability of the code base, it's not going to help us with time to market, it's not going to help us produce code faster, anything like that. It's just some mental thing that you have where you think, let's say that immutability is the, it's a really good thing and you have to have it because for some reason somebody told you so without actually doing your homework. Then I will question that, I will have a problem with that. And what I will truly have a problem with is when somebody creates a situation where a nice to have solution to something becomes business critical. I'll give you an example. So I was part, like we had an attempt to 
basically make uh, a, well, in essence, a documentation tool for a part of the system where the idea was basically that, all right, we would have a way to generate API documentation, we would have a way to structure our code in such a way that we can maintain our interfaces towards customers and things of this nature in an automated fashion. This sounds great because it's a tricky thing to have live documentation. As anybody will tell you, because the problem is that as soon as you, if you have documentation, and especially it's customer facing for documentation of some sort, it's very tricky for you to maintain that. Because as soon as you change anything in your code base, like any of the endpoints behave differently, you now need to go and remember, or you have to remember that, hey, now I need to go and update that documentation because it says A and it should say B now because I changed something. And so it makes a go you know it makes sense to have I mean it's, it is useful to have a live documentation tool but the problem with this is that the the solution that was suggested was basically that we needed to have a we needed to basically add in we would have to rethink the way we wrote code because in order for us to generate statistic like in a deterministic fashion these interfaces we would basically have to create a have a framework which dictated how we wrote our code and in order for that to work it would have to we would basically have to structure our entire code base and all of our decisions and all of our solutions based on that tool that is me getting a bit frustrated that is me becoming extremely upset because what that basically means is that in order to avoid having to have a like a reminder or some some process internal process just to make sure that our documentation is up to date which could be a simple reminder it could be a we could even hire a person to do something like that what we instead was were kind of going towards is okay so we will affect every single pro um, programmatic decision from this point on and into the future in order to gain this value. In my world, that is us, that is like uh, having a very, very warped cost value, like cost value ratio. The, it, the cost is enormous because if for any reason we want to do something that doesn't fit into this tool, if we want to solve something, we need a custom solution or anything like that, we can't because the tool, like once the tool is in, because it, it's basically one of these backbone features, it's like a framework, if you will. If that thing doesn't support the thing you want to do, you are fucked. Really fucked. You're fucked like all hell. Because now, if it's not intended to do this, either you have to update the framework or somehow, like, and God forbid that you get to a situation where the thing you actually want to do is either not on the roadmap, if it's a third-party framework or something, if it's an in-house thing that creates another sort of problem because now you need to think about, okay, so now the tool becomes this block, this thing, that needs to be updated but you also need to keep that backwards compatible compatible because if other teams have other solutions you make you have to make damn sure that you're not breaking something for somebody else so hopefully you can see my mind my, my mindset in this I, the problem comes when you when you'd make a decision to opt in for a solution a programming language a tool or something like that that has a lot of risk associated with it it's a big this is what this is what an architect should be really good at identifying a really good software architects needs to be able to identify these sorts of decisions that will have an impact on the entire company because this sort of decision is an it's a company-wide decision and if it doesn't work because remember if everybody's going to use this sort of api generating tool then everybody needs to make damn sure that all the po all the teams have a problem and a way of working that is going to fit within this framework because if they don't that's going to slow them down and that is a, quite a lot of risk so this and the same thing goes for programming languages if you have if you decide just arbitrarily to pick a programming language without understanding what it is that you're actually going to build then i would say that that is a big it's a big risk you're basically well you're you're basically just kind of spinning the wheel and hopefully hope, or spinning the bottom. Hopefully, it's going to land on something that works in your favor. When the thing that you should actually do is to take a real have a real think about. All right, 
what is the problem that we are solving? And is this thing actually going to bring us all that much value? And that should be a discussion. Unfortunately, it's not always a discussion. Sometimes, as I said, there you have some person of great influence within your company just kind of comes in and vetoes the whole decision and says, we're going to use that thing. And because that person has so much influence within the group, they simply get that thing through. And that's why you really, really, really need to be lucky. And hopefully if that's a, that person does this, they have a, continuous, a continuation plan and they have like, and especially if they're like higher up in the chain and they don't have some type of ego issue where if things don't work out, like they don't, back, you know, that they don't want to backtrack on their own decisions. There's tons of these issues that can, can kind of come from some managers des desire to make their mark, of, if you will, on the code base. And that is a dangerous thing because, you know, then it's kind of what I've said a few times about people getting excited about tools and getting excited about technology. You're, you're doing this for yourself. You're not doing it for, the, for the, what's best for the company. You're doing something emotional. You're doing something to, as I said, leave your mark, if you will. So what I want you to take away from this is basically the, th the thing that I think is consider things you should consider when it comes to picking something that you feel uncomfortable with. It's not that necessarily that, you know, for me, I don't... I mean, you adjust. If somebody adds in a tool or a language or something like that to your tech stack that you may feel a little bit uncomfortable with, then the first response from you should be to have this to have this discussion with them. All right, what is the value that you're going to bring by doing this? And try to really understand it. because if it's just you being a little bit shy or like intimidated by a new language or a new tool, that's on you. You're a programmer. You're supposed to learn new things. That's good. But you should be very careful with people just trying to add in things that you can come back from. As I said, if somebody just comes in with the motivation, oh yeah, let's add a new logging library because it has some subjective little value. I mean, if they want to spend an afternoon changing all the log lines, that's fine. Because as I said, it's very easy for you to, to switch that out. There's it's a logging, a logging library will not affect your entire decision process, your decision process all that much when you actually work. But if somebody comes in and says, hey, we're going to add a dependency on an unsupported library that basically, you know, it's going to give us this, as I said, like this very nice to have sort of thing where some documentation or say, I don't know, storybook or something like that, something that will give you a bit of subjective value. But you're also making the claim that, all right, we're going to add that in. And it, all it requires is for you to change your entire way of working and remember to maintain this forever because if you don't, you've stopped everybody to, from being productive. Those sorts of decisions, those sorts of tools, they should make you feel uncomfortable and you should question it a lot because there are different decisions going on in a company. Some of them are small and fairly okay to not be you know, really strict on, but these sorts of decisions, like the really, impact, the really big ones, the, those are the sorts of decisions that if they go wrong, they can cripple the entire business. And that's something you should be very careful with. Have a great day.